Hey there, I'm D-Pad Gamer, and it's time for Zelda Month. Last year, I ventured into what is definitely my least favorite Zelda game, Skyward Sword, and showed off its easter eggs. In the year since, a lot has happened, but one thing stays true. I still don't like this game. Regardless, I will not let that stop me from contributing to Zelda Month with some glitches in Skyward Sword. Let's start off with a glitch that's somewhat easy to do, looks neat, and is completely useless. We are going to glitch our way into Zelda's room like a little bit earlier than usual. First, head into Karine's room. There is only a flimsy wall that separates us from our destination, and to get through it, we need to get onto the desk. That can be done by rolling against the chair, and pressing A when Link manages to phase into it. This will make him sit onto the chair, and then if he gets back up, he'll be on the desk. From here, you just need to jump over to the end of the bed, then onto the shelf, and then onto the cat and bird pillows. This is my favorite part. Press A, and you'll get onto Zelda's bed, through the wall. Not even the laws of physics will stop Link. When he awakens, he'll be inside of the wall. Talk about waking up on the wrong side of the bed. If you move off to the right, Link will end up being stuck between some boxes and a shelf. Going off to the left should pop Link out into Zelda's room proper. Now, you're trapped. The door is still locked, and unless you can harry Houdini your way back out through the wall, you'll have to reset the game. Over in Skyloft Cemetery, start climbing down the ladder. If you shake your Wiimote, Link will leap in whatever direction you are holding. If you get him really close to the floor and leap downwards from around the third and second step, he'll be launched right into the clouds. Now it's time for a glitch that involves Link's companion, Fi. Fi? Fofum? However you want to pronounce it, we all know that Fi is great at talking. That can actually be used for a glitch called Fi Diving. To put it simply, you can have Link push himself off of a ledge while speaking to Fi, which makes it possible to have a conversation in the clouds itself. As far as I'm aware, this glitch is completely useless, but it's still pretty neat. So you see, when standing against the wall, if Link pulls out a bomb, it pushes him back slightly. If you're close enough to an edge, this is enough to push Link right off. As for the timing of Fi, try pressing down on the D-pad just after Link pulls out the bomb. Upon mastering this technique, the first thing I did was try to Fi dive right into some lava. It didn't go very well. Transitioning over to nighttime, find yourself one of those cat-like creatures called Remlets. With a Remlet in hand, walk on over to the Night Academy. Somewhere around here, go ahead and drop it and watch where it goes. Despite being able to literally fly, it cannot get past the dreaded fence. In the name of science, I hit it with some Skyward Strikes to see if I could get it free. No dice. It just so happens that just like the Remlet, the camera is also good at getting stuck. You just need to get it in the right spot. Whenever Link nears a door, you can see that the camera changes position slightly, locking onto the door. Find yourself a door like this one, and get Link right up against the right side of it. You want to move holding up and right while, in first person mode, looking to the left. When the camera shakes a bit, exit first person mode and move away. The camera should become stuck, continuing to lock onto the door no matter how far you go. There's not much you can actually do with this because unlike Wind Waker and its super swimming which involves a locked camera, the camera in this game will return to normal upon entering the water. For one of the few actually useful glitches that will be shown in this video, let's do a high flip. Like the name suggests, it's a glitch that allows you to flip. Hi. Neat, huh? Basically, after picking up an object with the A button, place it down or throw it. During Link's crouch, you should have a very small window of time to perform a backflip. After only a few minutes of trying, I was able to get this to happen about 1 out of every 5 tries. With a bit of practice, this can be a very handy tool for reaching ledges that you're not supposed to reach, and thus, sequence breaking. Next time you find yourself forced to play this game, give it a go. So, first Wind Waker, then Twilight Princess, and now Scoured Sword. Grab your DeLorean because it's time to go back in time. Again, I still don't know why that's the name of the glitch, but it is. If you've seen my videos on those games, you already know the drill, but in short, we're going to reset the game while continuing from a game over. This can be done very easily by pressing A to continue and then immediately pressing the home button on the Wiimote and hitting reset. The game attempts to respawn Link, while at the same time, going back to the title screen. What you get is Link, playable on the title screen itself. He has only the most simple of gear, but you're free to run around Skyloft with a big old logo in the way. Just be sure to press A to go forward into the file select screen every so often. If you don't, the title screen's cutscene will play, ruining the glitch. If you enter somewhere like the Bazaar, Link will now have all of his stuff, it seems, but my game crashed whenever I tried leaving. So now that you got in the hang of things, you can actually wrong warp using back in time. This is pretty simple, yet also confusing. Basically, two things are happening as you move around. In one layer, you're controlling Link and able to interact with things. In a layer on top of that, you're controlling the title screen and the file select screens. Every time you press a button, it affects both layers. That means with the file select screen up, you can simultaneously open a file while also hitting save on the burb statue. The screen should go to black and display a text box saying saved. Afterwards, you'll most likely see Link fall to his demise. Get it? Like, whatever. 
That was a wrong warp. Link's destination for the warp is dependent on where you game over in the first place, as well as which statue you save at in Skyloft during the back in time glitch. Just a warning, the majority of combinations has Link falling out of bounds. For a full chart on the various combinations, as well as further reading on the back in time glitch, check out the link in the description to zeldaspeedruns.com. Now, before we move on to some glitches that take place in Farron Woods, I would like to thank a regular viewer and member of my Discord server, Rulet. He helped make this video better by suggesting some of the following glitches and even providing example clips over on Twitter. It really helped out a lot. If you'd like to help make these videos better and maybe even get a little shout out of your own, throw me a follow on Twitter at dpetgamer underscore Sam. I always try to announce the game I'll be covering at least a few days in advance, so if you got some glitches you want featured, let me know. Providing images or videos along with your suggestions is that much more helpful. With that in mind, let's grab a bush over in Farron Woods. If you bring it over here to this area, for some reason it turns invisible. Yeah, just normal shrubbery stuff. In the same area, you want to navigate around and hop over this wall to get close to this tree, which has a rope hanging from its branch. Hop forward onto the tree and Z-target walk forward a bit. Move towards the end of the branch, while at the same time look at the C button, and what should happen is that Link will fall and immediately catch the rope, and his arms don't look so good. Oh my arm! It's broken! In addition to shattering multiple bones in Link's arms, this branch can actually be used to get out of bounds and access Lake Floria early. Again, Z-target and walk to the end of the branch. Keep targeting and hop forward and after a brief moment of air, which you cannot see, slash your sword. That should give you just enough distance and height to get out of bounds. You can also get out of bounds in Faron Woods in a different spot using a similar method. Near this section of fence in South Faron, hop forward and jump slash. Once on the fence, again Z-target and walk forward. For whatever reason, this game will do its best to prevent Link from falling off any ledges whenever he's Z-targeting. Another hop, skip and a jump, and you're out of bounds. Again. While we're up here, I decided to try climbing this arch. And I don't think that's supposed to happen. <laughs> Over outside the forest temple, there is a neat clip that can be formed on this section of vines. Pull yourself up with a claw shot and move over to the left and aim right around here. Link should pull himself right through and fall out of bounds, behind slash inside the temple. I believe a similar clip can be performed in other locations using vines, though I'll leave that up to you to discover. Now that we're back here, feel free to explore. Just be warned that in like most any game, out of bounds ground is not to be trusted. Also looking at these trees, I think this game's art team had some help from the Paper Mario crew. Over in the ancient cistern, let's create an invincible Skultula. First, take out one of the demon spiders and cut away as much of the web as possible. I suggest forcing the Skultula into the corner, place the bomb like so, and flip over the eight-legged freak. The goal is to have Link's fatal blow be interrupted by the bomb blast. If it works, the Skultula will be colored completely black and remain stuck in place, and is now invincible. And it can still flip over, and even attack Link. Find yourself a goddess wall, and after charging a Skyward Strike, if you back out and immediately try to side hop, Link will remain stuck in place for a moment. This goes for anything, rolling, hopping, backflipping, the ground is really sticky. Now it's boss time. This game has a tendency to have glitches during the boss fights, which I shall show you now, but unfortunately, due to some factor I'm not aware of, I was not able to replicate the following glitches. Credit for the following clips will be on screen, and links to the full versions will be in the description. In the battle with the tentacled leviathan Tentalus, for some reason rather than moving into phase 2 like normal, the game can become softlocked. Tentus will be stuck in place, sort of hugging the side of the ship. I like this ship! While fighting the imprisoned, Mr. Waluigi walkthrough encountered a glitch where, like Tentalus, the boss becomes stuck. When he's not trying to bring ruin to the entire world, the imprisoned looks pretty fluffy, like a weird shaped dog. During the Levias boss fight, there's a glitch that doesn't get him stuck. Groundbreaking, I know. If you land on the Levias' back, and place a bomb near the blowhole, the Bilocyte will be invisible. It's still possible to feed it, and if you do so quickly, this is actually very useful in a speedrun. During one of the battles against Giraheim, I'm, I'm gonna go with Giraheim, this game's most stylish villain, it's actually possible to get him stuck walking against the wall. Also, this is the only one of the boss glitches that I could actually replicate myself. So you see, at a certain point, he'll take Link's sword and use it against him. After a few swings, he'll wind back and chuck it at you. This takes some practice and proper positioning, but you can actually parry the sword in midair to have it fly back towards the door. If it lands and bounces just right, it can get stuck in the door itself. Gearheim will become locked in place, attempting to walk towards the sword to retrieve it. Until you pick it up yourself, he's stuck like that forever. Finally, let's end with Link's final encounter with Gearheim. SGTMEM03 uploaded a very interesting video in which everything seems weird. The camera's goofing around, 
Gearheim seems to be walking outside the platform and falling all the way down to the ground when he shouldn't, and most importantly, after reaching the ground floor, Gearheim will be stuck with his left arm outstretched. <sighs> oh great, as if I didn't need more reason to hate this game, Gearheim went and decided to dab on the haters. I think we're done here. Thanks for watching this video. Since this is likely my only contribution to this year's Zelda month, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're in the mood for some more Zelda related videos, I got you covered. Check out the stuff on screen. Also, for anyone who made it this far, thanks for being awesome. That's about it for this one. I'll see you next time. One.